Welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. On today's episode, we're going to talk about anxiety and depression and how it affects some of your other physical symptoms. Okay, yeah. So stress, anxiety, depression, that sad triad. And we just want to sort of give a little discussion about you know, how that, in the orthopedic world, how that uh, interacts. I mean, I, we did not get a lot of this training in medical school, in our medical school or in our, in our residency for orthopedics. And when you say not a lot, you mean zero. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah nothing. We did not. But we've learned a lot over the years of treating orthopedic conditions. And because of the prevalence of anxiety, depression, yes. it, it overlaps. So yeah, it's really changed. I would say in the last 10 years, more and more people that come into the office not only have medical problems like high blood pressure and diabetes, but not uncommonly have some component of uh, anxiety or depression, for sure. Which is a good thing. Not that, not, that they're, not that they have that, but that it's more recognized. And potentially treatable. Right. Yeah, for sure. Okay, okay so I have knee pain. Okay, so the obvious relation between stress, anxiety, depression, if you have knee pain or something's wrong with your body or some pain that just nobody can fix. I can't ski anymore, I'm depressed now. Yeah. I'm anxious, I'm stressed, yeah. something you've got wrong with you, you perceive is wrong with you, and it gives you stress, anxiety, depression. That, that sort of like, seems like an obvious relationship. Particularly with chronic pain that's quite severe, it certainly impacts every aspect yeah. of your life. Totally agree. Yeah. Um, the other direction though that they interact is if you have something uh, wrong, let's say with your knee, for example, yep. that, that maybe usually wouldn't, wouldn't be too bothersome to you, in the presence of stress, anxiety, depression, that sensation is heightened and now you're feeling it a lot more than you would be otherwise. And you're hyper aware. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah I tell my patients, it's like, okay, you, your knees, yeah, you've got a, a meniscal tear, something going on in your knee that normally shouldn't give you a, a huge amount of disability, but in the presence of stress, 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 anxiety, and depression, it's like turning the volume on that little knee problem up to 10 or 11. This one goes to 11. This one, and not in a good way. Not in a good way. It's like if you're, you hear a song in the background that you really hate that song, but if the volume's low, yeah. Jimmy Crack Corn. Yeah. But if someone cranks that song up to 11, you're gonna be going crazy and say, turn, turn that, I've heard the chicken dance too many times at this wedding, turn it off. So is it more that, is it more that then you're just aware of it? So what can you do about it though? Well, that, that's the thing. You have to direct the treatment to the cause. So we, we as orthopedic surgeons just look at the knee and say, okay, well, this is what's wrong, we're yep. trying to fix it, and this is as much as we can do, but if the patient is still experiencing a lot of pain, and it's in the presence of stress or anxiety or depression, you have to get that treated. Sure, use some of the other coping strategies or potential medication or whatever you've talked to your therapist about. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I've had situations like this where I've had a patient who replaced her hip, everything went great, she was doing well, but she was still experiencing a lot of pain yep. in her hip. And, uh, and I started asking her about, you know, have you been really stressed out lately? Have you been experiencing a lot of anxiety? We've got to ask these questions. And she's, she said, yes. Have you talked to anyone about it? No. Nope. Not me. Don't talk to me about it. I'm not an expert in that field. Yes. but. You've got to go talk to a special in that field, your family doctor. Yep. And once she came back, like six months later, after getting her anxiety treated, her hip pain was gone. Amazing. So, so I think the take-home message is that not all joint pain is caused by anxiety and depression. Yeah, However, all of it is. You need to. T <laughs> I'm out of a job. Now. <laughs> you need to take the big picture and maybe be, take a step back and say, "Listen, is it really my knee, or is it because all the other stuff, crazy stuff that I have going on in my life that's yeah. difficult and hard to cope with?" That's maybe amplifying it. Yeah, I mean, we see we see people who come in with complaining of knee pain, uh, and their knee is fine. And yep. really, it's a problem with their hip. Yeah, like, or a problem we, with their job. <laughs> it's, it's it's either your hip or your job. That's right. We can replace your hip, but you got to replace your job. Yeah, that one's on you. Yeah. So that's the deal. We just want people to understand that, you know, you you got to see your orthopedic surgeon, and you're not happy with what he or she said to you because you still have the pain that you went in with. Yet they've said we've done everything we can. It's possible that the pain is coming from somewhere else or some other condition, possibly maybe some stress, anxiety, or depression that could be turning the volume up on that musculoskeletal problem and making it unbearable. Food for thought. So if you treat that anxiety, depression, you might make that body part feel better. So if you like that video, please like it and follow us on Instagram and YouTube. If you could follow it at all. <laughs> sure. So please subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. See you next time.